Live on your Michigan, Pastor MJ Reed and the River Church family presents this week's edition of The Streaming River, live from the main sanctuary of the river, New Wine Glory. Let's go in as the worship experience is already in progress. Is the reason for the season. I said Jesus is the reason for the season. Everybody's celebrating, don't know why they celebrate. Hallelujah, but we know why. I said we understand why. Hallelujah. And we give God all the glory. I'm excited about today. I'm excited about this is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice. I said that's a commandment. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We understand that praise and worship is a technology. It's a spiritual technology. It's a transcendent technology. It's how we come out of the flesh and get in the spirit by worshiping him with our spirit, soul, and body. Amen. We just thank the Lord for all that he's done. And I thank the Lord that the rain came and washed away all the snow. I didn't really like the wind yesterday because, you know, the wind, we, we have a hard time with wind around here. It knocked power lines down. But I said, Lord, if you have to blow COVID out the city, blow it out. Blow it out the atmosphere. Amen. Y'all, see, y'all wasn't thinking about that yesterday. I said, blow it all out the atmosphere everywhere. Sweep through this city and blow it out. Hallelujah. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. See, it may not be good while it's working, but it's working for your good. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Come on and say yeah. I know we will. <laughs> well, at this time, go find two and three people. Greet them and praise the Lord with them. Break. You got at least three minutes to get out your seat. Go find somebody. Praise the Lord with them. Greet them. Shake hands with them. Let's break the tension up. You see some people that you don't know. River Saints, if you see somebody you don't know, you make sure you go out your way and go introduce yourself to them and speak to them. You got time to run to the restroom. You got time to say hi to somebody. You got time. Hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. You know those people that leave out before you get a chance? Say hi. Go get them. Go get them. Go get them now. Go speak to them. Go praise the Lord with them. Go shake hands with them. If you see somebody you don't know, especially our guests, you welcome them. Introduce yourself to them. Amen. Amen. We are a friendly church if we're not anything. A loving church. Amen. That's right. Be an ambassador, be a love ambassador for the Lord. Hallelujah. You've been waiting on a blessing. And it seems it just won't come. Doors are shut. Things are rough. And it seems nobody cares. The devil... He is a liar and, and, and a deceiver too. God is not through blessing you. God is not through blessing you. I did look at somebody and tell them, God is not through blessing you. So whatever, whatever he promised, our God is able, able to do. God is not through my, 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 my God is not through blessing you. You've been waiting on deliverance and it seems it just won't come. Body sick, pain everywhere. And it looks like you, like you are done. The devil, 
he is a liar and a deceiver to God is not through my 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 God is not through blessing you I wish I had some witnesses in here look at somebody and say so never tell somebody so never so never so never give up never give up what he promised to you God is not through my 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 God oh my God is not through blessing you you But you know why I know he ain't done? Because look where he brought me from. Look where he brought me from. From me out of darkness to this marvelous light. Can you get a witness? Ah, look where he brought me from. Look where he brought me from. From me out of darkness to this marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. He brought me from oh, look where he brought me from from the out of darkness to his marvelous light and get away with the he look where he brought me from oh, look where he brought me from can you get a witness from the out of darkness to his marvelous light and get away with the whoa I step I step I step down in the water the water was so cold, it chilled my natural body, but didn't chill my soul. I went down in the valley, didn't go there to stay. My soul got happy. I just stayed all day. Look where he brought me from. Brought me out of darkness to this marvelous light. Can you the witness? Wait a minute. Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried my Jesus? He's alright. Have you tried Jesus? Yeah. He's alright. Have you tried my Jesus? He's alright. He's a heavy load carrier. He's alright. He's a heavy load carrier. He's alright. He's my heavy load carrier. He's alright. You tried Jesus. He's my doctor in the sick room. He's alright. He's my doctor in the sick room. He's, right. He's my doctor in the sick room. He's right. Have you tried my Jesus? He's, right. He's my lawyer in the courtroom. He's, right. He's my lawyer in the courtroom. He's, right. He's my lawyer in the courtroom. He's right. Have you tried my Jesus? He's right. Have you tried Jesus yet? He's right. Have you tried Jesus? He's right. Have you tried Jesus? Right. Have you tried my Jesus? He's alright. 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 I don't care what the world says about him. He's alright. He's alright. He fixed it me. He touched my mind. He touched my body. He set me free. 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 He's all right. He's all right. Can I get a witness? Raise your hands. Shout his name. Bless his name. Turn around. Pick me up. Turn me around. My feet. Save the ground. Can I get a witness? He's all right. Give somebody hey. Clap your hand. That's your hand. That's your feet. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. 
right. He's all right. He's all right. Wait a minute. How many had some battles this week to fight? Did anybody come out of some great battles? The Bible said the water will come to your neck, but it won't overflow you. How many of the Lord has brought you out of some battles? If it had not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be? He's a battle axe in the time of war. He's a battle axe in the time of war. He's my battle axe in the time of war. He's my shelter in the time of storm. Oh, he's my battle axe. He's my battle axe. He's my battle axe. He's my shelter in the time of storm. Oh, he's a battle axe. Tell your name. He's a battle axe. He's my battle axe. He's a shelter in the time of Oh, there's a storm out on the ocean. And it's moving this way. If you're so not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. There's a storm out on life's ocean and it's moving this way. If you're so not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Oh, drift away, drift away. You will surely drift away. If you're so not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Oh, I'm not doubting about the way. About the way, walking in the light, holiness is right. I'm not doubting about the way. Come on, ain't got to doubt it. I'm not doubting about the way. I'm not doubting about the way. Walking in the light, walking in the light, holiness, holiness is right. I'm not doubting about the way. Oh, there's a storm out on life's ocean, and it's moving this way. If you're so not. Anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Oh, drift away, drift away. You will surely drift away. If you're so not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Give me some of that shout music. Oh, hallelujah. This is a sanctified church. This is the deliverance church. This is a Holy Ghost filled church. We rejoice in the Lord. Hey! The Bible says, stir up the gift in the flames. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Play that guitar. Pick that guitar. Hey! Anybody, want, anybody feel like dancing? Anybody want to cut a little step? Anybody want to dance a little bit, a little cut step? Anything the Lord does for you, you want to do a little jig? I'm going to give you a 30 second praise break because we got to move.
your glory. You can be the glory. God, be the glory. God, be the glory. For all the things He's done. For all the things He's done. For all the things He's done. For all the things. to you. You ought to lift your hands up and sh- Hallelujah. Yeah. We rejoice. We celebrate. You can't be the glory. can be the glory for all. For all the things he's done. For all the things he's done. For all the things he's done. For all the things he's done, for all the things he has done. Oh yes, I got to praise him. He put dancing in my feet, clapping in my eyes. Hey, I tell him, yeah, I tell him, I'm going to go see him. Turn to somebody right now and tell your neighbor, this ain't a problem. This is a problem. Tell them after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. Yeah, up from your belly. your hands up and just shout glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Put it down. 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 say thank you Jesus somebody shout hallelujah somebody say thank you hallelujah we got to give the Lord some praise come on to give the Lord the highest praise hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus oh hallelujah I said the Lord is good and his mercy endure forever Hallelujah. If you love the Lord, on the count of three, shout glory. One, two, three. Woo! To the old saints, we used to call that Jubilee. Jubilee is when you dance and you rejoice and you celebrate like you're at a party. If you go to a party and dance listening to some foolishness and you won't do it for the Lord, then that means you got your priorities wrong. I ain't got to say you got to be a goofy dance person, but you ought to think of it as good. Something ought to move you sometimes. I don't care if you got to hop and bounce up and down. It ought to make you shout. Or maybe the Lord ain't nothing for nothing for you. I don't know. But I get excited when I think about Jesus. I could be having the worst day, but then I'm looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of my faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever it is, Jesus makes it better. Oh, hallelujah. Woo. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We rejoice in the Lord always. 
joy unspeakable, full of glory. Hallelujah. People think that the church changed. The church has been the same for thousands of years. They rejoiced and praised God. I got a question for this section over here. Can y'all hear me? I said, where's the party at? Oh, is the party over here? It sounds like the party's over. Oh, an all-purpose tool. Because when we begin to magnify the Lord, we make everything else smaller. And when we magnify the Lord, the Lord arises and his enemies are scattered. Hallelujah. When we magnify him in every situation, hallelujah, give him glory. His presence, his manifested love, his joy, is glorious. It's intoxicating. It's heaven's cocaine addiction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This joy I have. The world did not give it to me. And I won't let COVID, I won't let Corona, I won't let nothing else take it from me. Hallelujah, he gave it to me. And it's my strength, hallelujah. It's the same way as how Paul sung in the midnight in the jail cell. He praised God until all the chains fell off. He praised God until the doors flew open. Hallelujah, you see, I know you're bound when your mouth is closed. But I know you're set free. You got deliverance when your mouth is open. You're speaking the praises of God. Hallelujah. You got something you want to break, begin to worship him. Build an altar and begin to give him glory. You can't be in doubt. You can't doubt God when you're praising him. It takes faith to praise him. You can't call him wonderful and glorious and great and still not believe him. You can't do it. Praise and worship is the expression of my faith. I rejoice not because everything is all right. I rejoice because he's got it in his hand. It's going to be all right. Look at somebody say, it's going to be all right. Take your neighbor by the hand and shake it like you're getting ready to shake it loose. And tell somebody, I may not be everything that I ought to be. But thank God, I'm not what I used to be. And because of the hand of the Lord on my life, because of the Holy Ghost, because of the blood of Jesus, because of the anointing, I am getting better all the time and tell him all the time God is good I don't care what the devil says hallelujah <laughs> yes I just want you to know I'm that Pentecostal person they warned you of I'm not charismatic I'm Pentecostal I'm not full gospel Baptist I'm Pentecostal I'm that person they warned you about. I'm that rolling on the floor, tongue, talking in the corner, drunk in the Holy Ghost, got to be carried out. I'm that person. Hallelujah, because I'm hooked on the glory of God. Just one touch from the Lord. Hallelujah. Let your glory fill this house. Let your praises fill my heart. Let each vessel offer up. To you, the sacrifice of prayer. Oh, you alone are holy. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. Oh, you deserve. you alone one more time with hands uplifted let your glory fill this house let your praises fill my heart and let your praises fill my heart let each vessel offer up to you let each vessel offer up to the sacrifice of praise, the sacrifice of praise. You alone are holy, you alone are holy, you alone are worthy, you alone are worthy. Oh, Jesus, you deserve the glory.
Father, we give you praise and glory. We worship you, Lord. Lord, you are wonderful. I'm in love with you. I worship you, Jesus. You have my heart. In my heart, there is no rival. In my affections, there are no competition. I, I cast down every stronghold and every imagination. I crown you King of Kings and Lord of Lords in my heart today. I worship you above all else. And I give you glory. You are the King, immortal, invisible, invincible, the all-wise God. You are the mighty one, the King of Israel, and we worship you and glorify you. Yes! Bring forth the royal diadem. Bring forth the crown and crown him a King of Kings, a Lord of Lords. Lift up your head. It's in my heart. Jesus is in my heart. It's in my heart. This melody of love divine. It's in my heart. I am his. And he is mine. It's in my heart. Oh, the love we share. It's in my heart. It's in my heart, it's in my heart. Jesus is in my heart. <laughs> He's hitting them Jimmy Swagger chords on right now. Isn't he? Oh my Lord, watch out here. So you wasn't raising it. Anybody do something when I hear that? The saints struggled and trialed and went through triumphantly. Hallelujah. I miss the saints. Bless your name, Lord. You better stop now. You better stop now. <laughs> Look how going from here. Stop all that. Because I'll go like, when Jesus come, Satan's power is broken. When Jesus comes, the tears I wiped away. For when He comes, He fills a life with wonder. For all is well when Jesus. To stay. You gotta stop. You gotta stop. You gotta, we gotta move on. Hallelujah. Take your seat, somebody. I know it's not fair to get you stirred up and then cut it off. I know how that is. But we gotta move on. I love those songs. Every now and then we have to reach back and touch those things that are tender as we came up. Don't forget the old song. This stuff they're making now ain't got no battle in it. 
You got homosexuals and all kind of atheists and half believers writing this stuff. They don't believe the stuff they're writing. A million, they just took a love song they wrote for their girlfriend and put Jesus in it. Got a million, a million choruses in it. I can't even remember all this song. It's five different choruses talking about how much you love Jesus. You don't love Jesus that much. Quit lying. Hallelujah. If you love them that much, you'd be witnessing to people every day. You'd be praying. You'd be seeking it. You don't love them that much. Quit, quit telling all that. Start saying songs like, teach me how to love you. Show me how to be more committed. Be honest about it. Hallelujah. God loves honest praise and worship. I, know I'm tr- I love the Lord for what I know. I'm trying to love him more. I'm trying to get better. Hallelujah. Half the praise and worship in most churches is not even honesty. Amen. It's true. When you love somebody, it's an ongoing relationship with them. Amen. I can't get no witnesses in here. I miss those old songs. We used to sing. They had, they had battling. Somebody had to fight to get that song. Somebody stayed up all night. Somebody was struggling with God being faithful, and that's how great is thy faithfulness came. Come on, somebody. That's what those songs, they were birthed out of trials and tribulations and reality that God brought you through. Amen. They wrote a song about it, inspired something. They weren't trying to sell records and get on stage and have a Christian music career. That wasn't what they was trying to do. Hallelujah. I know some of y'all don't like church life. You won't go away and do like this for half an hour. We don't just, we don't, no, you're going to put your hands together. You're going to clap. You're going to bless the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, everything in you. Worship is a three part function spirit, soul, and body. You're going to praise Him with your mouth, praise Him, lift up the holy hands. You got to do something. You know what? If you don't make your body praise the Lord, your body will make you do something. You got to show your body who's the boss. You know, you lift them hands up. Open your mouth and praise God. No, you're going to bless the Lord. No, you're going to worship the God of your creation. You're going to bow down to your maker and your creator. You will. David said, I'm going to command myself to worship the Lord. You got to, sometimes you got to tell yourself because I don't always feel like doing it. But regardless of how I feel, I found that this key to survival, to overcoming, I found it is that what I don't feel like doing, I have to make myself do it. When I didn't feel like worshiping God, I had to make myself worship. In my darkest times, with tears falling down my eyes, believing that I don't know why, God, you let this happen. Why is this happening? So much misunderstanding, but I had to worship. When I learned to worship him, I found that the Lord loved that worship more than any other time. He drew closer to me when I didn't feel like doing it. You know, you find out when somebody loves you when they don't really want to be bothered with you but be good to you anyway. That's when you find out when somebody loves you or not. When they're mad at you but they still treat you right. That's when... Love will make you do stuff like that, won't it? You did, he got on your nerves yesterday, but you still fried him some bacon this morning. Come on, say yes. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody old song said, we don't understand everything, but we'll understand it better. By and by, you will understand it. I'm looking forward to the day when I stand before Jesus and he shows me my life and I say, that's what that was. I didn't understand what you were doing all the time. You have to trust the Lord. Amen. Look at somebody and say, God has a plan. No, no, really tell somebody God has a plan. Do you believe he has a plan for you? He does have a plan for you. The devil has a plan for you too. Amen. But we cancel the devil's plan. And I'm going full-fledged into the new year. We're coming into the new year in power. We're not going out in, as victims. We're coming in in power with victory. And to do what the will of God. You know what? You have to determine that you're going to do the will of God. You have to be determined whatever God wants me to do, I'm going to do it with all my might. You got to be a soldier. We ain't got time for sissies in the church. This is not a sissified time. Amen? We don't. And I mean by that week and just, you know, you're trying to just pull your boots up and be a soldier. Somebody called me this week and they was telling me, Pastor, they was going through all the stuff they were going through and this happened. The car blew up, this blabbing. And they was like, what am I going to do? I said, you better get down and start praising him right now. You better start giving God glory. I know you don't feel like it. I said, that's the, that's, the worst, that's the best kind of praise when you don't feel like it and you make yourself do it anyway. That's when it really counts. That's when it's a sacrifice of praise. Everybody want to praise him when everything going your way. Everybody want to bless the Lord when you feel good. What about when the enemy has come in? And stolen your family and stolen things from you. David at Ziklag, he was down and said, Lord, what should I do? The Lord said, pursue and recover all. The Lord only talks that way to worshipers. He don't talk that way to people that don't worship. People that don't worship God and stuck religion, he just say, yes, you're right, it's pretty bad. Talk to me, call me later. Because you ain't got the key to life yet. You're still struggling. But to worshipers, he says, all options are open to you all access go ahead recover you're gonna get it because you're gonna praise your way through 
Amen. I feel all right this morning. I got a little shake. I got a little dance in. I shook off some stuff. I cast some cares away. I feel all right. I got the victory. Do you have the victory this morning? You know you got the victory. Amen. This joy that you have, something about the Holy Ghost, it it just bubble up with joy. Like, what are you doing down there? Have you ever had him hit you in the bed while you was laying in bed? Just shut it up, Uncle Sly. What's going on around here? I was trying to watch Netflix and go to sleep. <laughs> Amen. Well, we're excited today. I have a very good friend here today, a prophet to the nations, a man of God. I'm trying to bring in prophetic voices to the church because I see a lot of confusion about prophecy. People think prophets, all they do is tell you what cars and wives and husbands are going to come. That's the least of the prophetic ministry. I've taught you that. Prophetic ministry is about focus. The prophetic ministry is about coming in alignment with God's will. The prophetic mind is about revealing the mind of the Lord. What God is saying now, what is God speaking to his church, it sets fresh conquests for the people of God. It realigns and brings alignment. It shifts atmospheres. It breaks holes. The prophet's ministry is about recovery. Throughout the Bible, the prophet came and gave a word and things were recovered. It's about confrontation. Amen. It confronts. It brings recovery. It straightens out crooked stuff. It's a repairer of the breach. Amen. The prophetic ministry is about bringing people into maturity. Amen. The Bible says the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Jesus didn't testify of himself. He said, my father testifies of me. What did the father say about Jesus? This is my son. Prophetic ministry is the release of sonship. It's bringing people into maturity and sonship into Christ. Amen. And today I have a very good friend. This last month of the year, we're going to have New Year's Eve service. I'm going to be consecrating. I've already started consecrating. We're going to have laying on hands and anointing on New Year's night. We're starting at 7 o'clock because we don't believe in midnight service. I don't know where that's in the Bible. It ain't in there nowhere. We're going to have service at 7 o'clock on New Year's Eve. We're going to be preaching and ministering the word the Lord gave us. We're going to lay hands and anoint people. We're going in with power. I want everybody that's not been filled with the Holy Ghost to get filled with the Holy Ghost that night. I want you to get, I want you to be throwing up tongues and baptized and drunk. And when you get through, when you get sober enough, we're going to have all kinds of food back there. We're going to have a celebration. You ain't got to go to no restaurant. We're going to have all kinds of fried chicken and tacos and all kind of good food going to be here. You know, no eating in the sanctuary, though. But we're going <laughs> we're gonna to have it here at New Year's, and we're going to be done. At midnight, when the world is going crazy, we're going to be the done eating and partying. Amen. I'm going to be as usual clean so you know you can come dressed like you just got off the hayride if you want to but i won't <laughs> amen so i'm gonna party like it's 1999 over oops out of time i'm gonna go in with power and believe in god for me next year next year in the body of christ there's going to be a move of god in the country whether you know it or not, COVID has come and shut down many churches and shut down many people. And I would dare say many of them probably had no business pastoring anyway. We were frontline pastors. We stayed open during the pandemic. We did not shut down. Nobody in this church died of COVID. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. No members of this church died of COVID. We rebuke COVID. We come against that devil. Amen. I caught it and shook it off. And Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm not dying until God says it's time for me to go. I'm not going nowhere. He that keepeth Israel watches over me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But I tell you what, there are those that fail like those that fell in the wilderness. If you didn't have the strength and ability to go on with God, you give in to fear. You cannot give in to the spirit of fear. You cannot because fear is the energy that brings chaos and death. You cannot do it. Faith gives power, gives action to the power. Fear, fear gives action to death energy. You can't do it. Amen. Jesus' words said, I am, he says, my words are spirit and they are life. He said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring forth good things, not bad things. Amen. So put in the storehouse what you want to see come forth. Amen. So we're going into victory. Amen. We miss those who we lost. We, 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 we grieve those who have passed on that we love. But we got to live on and do what God tells us to do. Look at somebody say, you're on assignment. You're on assignment before God. God has an assignment for you. It's time that you focus and find out what that assignment is. It may be small, but the Bible says don't despise the day of small beginnings. You know, some of y'all want to jump right into the headline of ministry, but you got to get your, get your wheels working cleaning bathrooms. I can't get no help in you. Sometimes you got to serve God and just get your whistle wet first before he plunge it in the depths of the revival. I can't get no witnesses. Amen. God is up to something. Well, God sent COVID. God didn't send COVID. God allowed COVID. 
But God will allow you to run in front of the train and get hit too if that's what you want to do. These things were allowed because of the wickedness of men and the evil of men. It's the work of the devil and anything the devil is doing, I'm against it. I said, I'm against it. Anything the devil is doing, I'm not for it. I'm standing against it, speaking against it, rebuking it. And when the whole body of Christ stands up and becomes like a soldier and stands as one man, you're going to see a shift in this nation. Next year, God is going to bless those churches that have stood. He's going to bless those ministries that have stood in faith. He's going to bless everybody that went through this thing with their hands up in victory and giving God glory. Because the Lord has not appointed us under wrath. I said, the Lord has appointed unto us the good things. Even, well, it's the end time. It's the apocalypse. Let me tell you something. The Antichrist can't show up as long as I'm here. Because he said, behold, I give you power over all the power. He got, come on. I can't get no witnesses here. We, got, we still got power over the devil, whether he's the Antichrist or not. I can't get no witness. He said, behold, I give you power over some of the power of the devil, except for the Antichrist. No, he said, all power. Amen. The church is to be glorious and victorious. Comfort your hearts with these words. Let not your heart be troubled. We're going to bring Marcus. Amen. Let's bring this podium down. I'm going to let him preach on the ground. I'm going to speak on the ground. Let him speak. He's a great man of God. He comes out of Chicago. He was raised up under many men of God, women of God. He's a graduate of Raymond Bible College. That's my alma mater. He came out after I did. I came out in 92. He came out. Would you come out? 98. Oh, I, I, it was quite a little gap there. But he has a prolific ministry. He works with John Eckhart in Chicago. He's one of his associates and many other ministries across the country. Focus International is the name of the ministry, bringing focus to the body of Christ. His lovely mother and friends and associates and family members have come down with him. We're so excited to have him come. It's been a long time. He's been my good friend for quite a while. We always enjoy having fellowship and talking on the phone. Remember I told you all that there was a prophet that died and went and saw the Lord, and the Lord told him to rebuke the spirit of premature death and fear? This is the prophet. He's going to tell you his testimony. He was dead a few months ago. He was sleeping for four months, and the Lord said, Awake, O sleeper, and Christ shall give you light. He comes, to, he comes to share that testimony and keys from the other side of what God is saying to this church. Will you stand up on your feet and receive the man of God, God's man of faith and power, none other than Prophet Marcus Beaver. Receive him with a great amen. Come on, stretch your hands and give God a mighty shout in this place. Come on, stretch your hands and give Him a mighty shout. Let the real church open your mouth. I'm not talking about the fake church. Let the real church open your mouth and give Him praise. Tell somebody in here something good is about to happen to you. Come on, prophesy to somebody and tell them, I declare something good is about to happen. Tell them right now, there's a shift happening. The heavens are opening. Oh, come on, clap your hands. Yeah, yes. I said, clap your hands and give them praise in, in his house. In his house. In his house. Yes, Lord. Woo! Yeah. So, uh, it's good to be here. Y'all sit down. It's good to be here. Um, with my good friend. I love this man. I, he's, you know, it's not too many people that I, I will talk on the phone with. For more than an hour or two just doesn't happen and uh, but when we get on the phone I look at the at the time it's hours and that's very uncommon and so I'm, I'm grateful to be here with him and uh, he's a very I say this about him and Kevin Lill Kevin Lill is a father to me I have two fathers and one is John Eckhart and Kevin Lill and both of them are good friends of mine and I appreciate them but I say this about him and your pastor, there's some of the brightest men, just smart about everything. And when I talk to Kevin, I feel like I'm going to school. He said, take your pads out. And I take my pad out. And um, it's, just, uh, it's just great to be here. My mother is here somewhere. There she is. Stand up. This is my mother. 
She's a champion. I'm alive today because she stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the spirit of death and said, back your hands off my son. <laughs> and I was just, just glad to have a mother that knows God, that is saved for real. All I know is holiness because of my mother. My mother has never said a bad word about anybody. Never. I've never heard her say a bad word to anybody. Even when I felt like she should have checked somebody. She said, we're just going to pray for her. And so I'm grateful to have her here with me from Chicago. And um, a little bit about my testimony. I don't want to give the whole testimony because if I give it all, then we'd be here for quite a while. But I had purchased, uh, I had a vacation place. Thank you, sir. I had, had purchased a vacation place in um, Phoenix, Arizona. Actually, I was renting a luxury apartment there, and I was enjoying myself. In the winter months, I was a snowbird. And what snowbirds do is we leave when the snow comes, and we return when the snow leaves. And so I was at um, Arizona, and I was sending back all these pictures to my staff. I was teasing John Eckhart. I said, are you suffering for the Lord there in Chicago? And I would send pictures of me next to the swimming pool, 75 degree weather. I would come into Chicago and <laughs> I would come into Chicago and preach, and I would I would have my secretary have my flight booked before I even got on the stage. I said, I'm gonna come in and do this meeting, and I'm out to dough. And so I was going back and forth, and I right around the middle of January, my natural son, he said, "You don't look good." And um, I said, well, "What do you mean? He said, you just you just look weird." He said, "I just I just don't like the way you look." And so um, I didn't think nothing of it. I got on a Zoom, and I was preaching to about, I was teaching to about 60 uh, true, authentic prophets. And I was doing some training and some teaching, and my secretary of 13 years texted me and said, get off the live, get off Zoom. She said, you don't look well. Now, recently, I just went back to those Zooms and watched it, and I did not look well, but I did not know that something was going on. So my mother flew to Arizona. Now, Arizona is not in the neighborhood of Chicago. So it wasn't like she was like, I was just in the neighborhood. I decided to stop by. <clears throat> she had to drive to the airport, take a four-hour flight, and then drive about 45 minutes out to my house. So she, she came, and um, <clears throat> she, she said, I'm here to take you back to Chicago. And I was going to fight her because I didn't want to go back to the cold. I said, I, well, I, 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 I don't want to do that. She said, well, let's just get some blood work. Let's, why don't you come back? And I said, fine. And so uh, she left that a couple, couple of days later. And I was going to leave, but I decided I'm not going to leave. And the Spirit of God said to me, because she had left that morning. I was supposed to leave with her. And the, anybody that knows me, I travel extensively. I don't like morning flights. I rarely make them. Uh, so don't, don't, don't book me in the morning. But my secretary, for some reason, booked me at 5 or 6 in the morning. So as I thought I would do the night before, I texted her about 2 a.m. said, you need to change this. I'm not going to be able to make it. And I contemplated staying there in Arizona. But something on the inside of me said, go home. So I came home and went to my home in Illinois. And I began to rest and relax. But something, something began to happen in my physical body. I couldn't explain it, but I wasn't, I wasn't myself, and I could feel it. And I said, Mom, why don't you just go ahead and take me to the hospital? Let's see what's going on. And she said to me, she said, well, it's a blizzard outside. She said, so why don't you call the ambulance, and I will meet you there, or I'll come and eventually to the hospital to where you are. Well, they did some blood work, and they um, said, UIC, the university here of Illinois, does not like what they see. They want me to send you to them. So as I was getting on the gurney, I have an Armani bag, a book bag that I, I keep with me, <clears throat> and I grabbed the bag, and the Lord said to me, I'm going to bring you through this. And I thought to myself, bring me through what? I'm already prepared to be back in Arizona in three days. I got to get out of here. It's cold, and now it's a blizzard. I'm out of here. <clears throat> so I thought. Um, around February the 2nd, 3rd, maybe around the 4th, 
I remember uh, being in the hospital. And after that, I woke up April 19th. <clears throat> now, when I woke up, um, I woke up with something in my throat. Uh, I, could, I, I was talking, but it was a lot of air coming out. I woke up with IVs and tubes everywhere. I had IVs in my feet, my leg, my arm. They were everywhere. Every possible wear that I needed to use the bathroom, there was a tube there. I had so many machines around me. I looked around like, what? I didn't understand. The first thing I said was, where's my mother? And so the doctor began to talk to me, asked me what the day was. The day was. I said, well, it's February 10th, 9th, 10th. He said, no, son, it's April 19th. I said, you mean to tell me I slept past, I missed my birthday? He said, you missed your birthday. I was more mad that I missed my birthday than all the machines I was attached to. <clears throat> and so I said, where's my mother? He said, we're going to call your mother. She's coming. And I asked him what happened. Now, nobody told me that I died. Nobody said that to me. As a matter of fact, I faced, my mother FaceTimed me. We were talking. And I said, I died. And, of course, she didn't want me to have, didn't know what the state of my mind was. So she didn't say anything. My sister, no one would say anything. But I knew I had died because I didn't have a visitation. I've had multiple visitations, multiple times, standing somewhere in the head of the church would just walk in. But this was different. I knew I physically left the earth. How many people know that uh, when, you, when you leave the earth, the thing that you want to hear the Lord say is, well done? That's not what he said. No, I had no sin in my life. I'm a holy man. I live holy. But as I was standing before the Lord Jesus, the Lord was looking at me and he was shaking his head no. And that's not a good sign. If you die and the Lord is shaking his head, no, that is probably not a good sign. And the Lord said to me, premature death is in the land at an all-time high. Now, I didn't know anything that was going on in the world. I was, I was out. He said to me, I'm going to make, I didn't cause this to happen to you. He says, but I'm going to use you as a sharp weapon against the spirit of premature death. He said, People are dying, and they do not have to die. And the next thing I know, the process began. And um, most people that see me, and I'm going to be done with my testimony here. Most people that see me or that know of the testimony say to me, you are a, my atheist doctor who is an atheist. Says somebody's with you. He wouldn't go as far as saying God, but he said, I'd be stupid enough to tell you that somebody's not, somebody's with you. The doctor that was pumping my chest told me, God is with you. And so I don't I, I, I travel still extensively, but I don't go everywhere. Because when God Brings you back to life from death. I mean from death, from death. You're not pretty much interested in what you do or how many times you do it. You're interested in what is God doing, and that's it. I'm not interested in any of the fluff, all that. Uh, you can keep it. I turn down more invitations than I take. Because I'm about this place here, I'm about, watch this, because this is where this applies to you. I'm about going places where God is either moving or God is about to do something that has never been done before in that local church. I'm here to make an announcement. God is about to do something in this church that has never been done before. God, th yeah, I said, God, listen to me. I don't care how long you've been in existence. Something is about to happen in this church that has never happened in this church before. There's about to be a move of God that comes out of this place. A glory cloud that comes from this place that has never come from this place before. Those are the places I'm assigned to. No more going to the church and cleaning it up with the pastor back at, in the state. I don't have that kind of time. You disqualified for what I have to say. 
If you're still trying to keep your zipper up, just zone out, walk out, leave an offering and just go. I don't even have time for you. I'm looking for some people that are hungry, that are say, I'm standing at the altar and I'm believing God for something that he's never done before in my life. This pastor, Lord, I'm streaming live and my page is streaming. Lord Jesus, this pastor invited me to go. Mega church said, I want you to come and preach. I said, sure, I'll come. The Lord said, why'd you say that? So I started praying. God took me into the service. As I was in the service, I was ministering prophetically, and it wasn't good. I said, this guy's stealing money. He's covered up affairs that he has had. I said, he's covered up something that happened in the youth group. Elders swapping around. I said, you don't want me to come. I said, because you're disqualified for what God is about to do. If you don't have this thing called holiness, you can't even walk what God's about to do. Tell somebody, you can't move into the next. Come on, tell them real strong. I'm telling you, you cannot move into the next if you are still battling with your flesh and your stuff. You're disqualified for what God's about to do. One of the things the Lord said to me when I died, he said, Marcus, I am coming to do a site visit to my house. People are going to know what is mine and what is not. Oh, you might have been able to get by for so many years with your fad. You might have been able to get along with your charisma, but the power of God is coming. And the Lord, you know, I heard a, oh, God, I'm going to get in trouble. I heard a prophet say that God is the only employer that will let you keep working for him, fire you, and let you keep working for him. You know what the head of the church said to me? He said, oh, no, I'm not. He said, I'm going to fire you and I'm going to escort you off the job. You're going to walk out willingly or they're going to roll you out, but you're getting off the platform. Because there's a glory. The people are summoned in the glory to the house of God. We need an authentic move of God in the nation. And unfortunately, it's hijacked by wicked preachers. Oh, Jesus. Platforms are hijacked. By charisma and foolishness. How can you, how can you come up this, off the platform and get involved in sexual immorality? Like, how can you do that? I don't understand that. I'm still trying to figure. How can you be what you say you are and get off the platform and get in the bed with God today, anybody? With no conviction. And you think God is using you. Just because something is big doesn't mean God's in it. Remember there were 450 prophets of Baal. That was a mega church. And it was only one prophet of the Lord's church. And God answered by fire. Come on somebody. To what was authentic. You may can talk a good game, but it's the power of God that's going to separate us in the hour. So if, you, if you're still struggling in your flesh, I can't help you. I'm not called to you. Now the pastor cleaned it up next week. But there's nothing I can do for you. Because we, we, should be, we should be surpassed that. We should be mature. You want to handle the mature things of God, we got to walk in maturity. Discipline. So one of the things the Lord said to me in 2021, he said this, I'm going to talk about this a little bit here. And then I want to, I want to, I want to minister. The Lord, the Lord just recently uh, just, just released me to, he said, what I want you to do is I want my people, my people need to be blessed. They haven't done this years and years. 
He said, I want you to start walking the floor and ministering to my people, blessing my people. Now, that's the lowest level of the prophetic ministry. I'm going to bless a few of you today. Is that all right? My hands is clean. My heart is pure. So watch this. I want to talk about the record breakers anointing. The record breakers anointing. So in 2021, the Lord spoke to me and he said, Marcus, my people are about to break records. Limitations. Bloodline breakers are going to be raised up. Things that has never been done in your bloodline before, you are about to do it. Places in your bloodline that no one has ever been, God is about to release the anointing of the record breaker over your life. I don't care how much success you've experienced, you're about to experience another dimension of breaking records. Tell somebody, I release upon you the record breakers anointing. Now, most of us have heard of the Guinness Book of World Records. It's where they try all they can to break records that have been previously done. I don't mean it ranges from anywhere of how many hot dogs somebody can eat, how much water a person can drink. It's all kind of ridiculous things and comp competitions to see who can do the most or who can, who can break the previous record. We have record breaking in track and field. This year, uh, one of the one of the one of the uh, gold medalists broke many records. This is the season and the time, and this was not, this will not just last. Hear me prophetically. This will not just last one year. This will not just last two, three, four, five years. You are going to move. Watch this in a record-breaking movement for your life. Don't y'all make me catch some B-flats in here. Y'all take be easy on me, please. You are going to move into a record-breaking movement. Your business is about to break records. Now, the Lord will not allow me to preach this message everywhere. I've gotten this word a year ago, and I've only preached it five times. He said, don't preach this everywhere because it's not for everybody. In your family, your bloodline, the record-breaking movement is coming over your bloodline. More people in your bloodline are about to get saved at all it takes is a little faith if you just throw your faith out there right now. What you've been toiling with for years, trying to get your family saved, God is getting ready to put a record-breaking anointing over your bloodline. With little to no effort, your family is about to experience a blood-breaking revival. Come on, somebody. Say wishful thinking, this is the word of the Lord. This ain't a hope and I pray. This is a prophetic word from the throne of God for your life. Your business, your family, your marriage, mm. your church, your pastor. Record breaking. Somebody shout record breaking. Somebody shout it again, record breaking. The word record means the sum of past achievements or actions of a person, watch this, or an organization. Things that have been recorded in the past. You know, we, have, we are coming up on a record breaking move of God. Do you know why the enemy has acted out so badly? It's because we're coming into another awakening. Yeah. And this church is going to be a prophetic hub. I wish I was talking to the right people in here. I said this church 
It's going to be a prophetic hour. <laughs> Woo! See, many people take it for granted that this kind of prophetic message goes to every church. It does not. This church, yeah, is going to be a prophetic hub, a revivalist hub for record breakers. That means if you're already in here, you're on the front line of this record-breaking anointing. You don't have to wait till it get here. You're getting the, you're getting the first one of the first partaker of the record-breakers. Somebody open your mouth and shout hallelujah in this church. Come on, you better throw both your hands up and act like you want it real bad. Act like you've been believing for it. Act like you're expecting it. Send the record-breakers anointing. So we've been able to do some things in the past. You've been able to do some things in the past. So the Lord said to me, you're going to, watch this. Be replatformed. You're no longer going to do things how you used to do it. You're no longer going to move how you used to move. You're going to move differently. You know, the first thing God does before he gets to do something differently is change your mind. Your mindset. He gets you around people that have the ability to help you get to where you're about to go. You move, say this with me, if I move different, if I think differently, well, that's not loud enough. Kevin Leal's been here before. Say it out loud. If I think differently, I'm going to move differently. Say it again. If I think differently, I'm going to move differently. So the Lord said to me, Marcus, you can't do that no more. Well, it's not sin. It's not sin, but you're getting ready to move differently, so you got to start thinking differently. Watch this. He said, pre-death. Now, pre-death, I'd take anything. I'd wear myself out preaching. There was a time I used to preach seven, six or seven times in one, one week. He said, you have to move differently. You only take what I tell you to take. You only move when and where I tell you to move. And many of you in here have been spun out and wore out because you've been moving in ten different directions. You're being pulled in 10 different ways. But if you're going to break records, you're going to have to narrow down to the thing that God has spoken unto you. So I was talking to a friend of mine who's been one of my best friends for years. Chatting on the phone. I'm sick of these people. He getting on my nerve. I'm tired of ministry. I'm tired of the church. I'm tired of preaching. Just tired. Well, th th that, that wouldn't be a bad thing to vent to me about being a friend. But what he began to say began to get inside of me. And I found myself, I'm sick of these people. And the Lord said, hold on, what people are you sick of? Watch your mouth, son. But see, my thought pattern was being shaped by my conversations. How I thought was being shaped out of the people I was spending the most time talking to. The Lord said, son, if you're going to do something what I told you to do, you have to stop talking to him. But this is my friend. I don't care. Man, I've been doing this for 20 years. Ain't nothing happening. I'm getting sick of this. I'm going to get me a job. I said, well, maybe that's what you should have been doing in the first place. <laughs> I 
I said, maybe that's what you thought the church was, a job. So the Lord said, stop talking to him. I said, Lord, we spent 4th of July together, me, his wife, his family. He said, stop going. Because there's an impartation being made into your life. And you're about to miss, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're about to miss what I'm about to do. Because the mindset of the people that you're listening to and talking to is not the mindset of where I'm about to take you. Now, I'm not into cutting people off, but I'm not in allowing people to shape what God's about to do in my life. And if I have to cut you off, I will. And listen to me. With this anointing, it's being, it's being released in here already. With this anointing of the record breaker, you can't worry about hurting people's feelings. You got something to do. Now, that happened about six years ago. Now, I just recently got invited to that church to preach. No anointing, no people, no glory, nothing. Dead. And the Lord said to me, and it, when, when I fell through the preacher, he said, man, you, you're doing some big stuff. And it, it's not to brag, but you know what it is? It's because I got away from a little mentality. I'd be in the same boat he was in if I was listening to him. So what are you saying, preacher? What are you saying, man of God? Number one, change your mindset. Get around, you know, I, get, get around some people. I was going to say that, but I'm not going to say it. Get around some people that have a different mindset than you. Talk to some people that are doing something for God. Let your intellect be stirred up by people who have a, a mind to do something for God. Hmm? Remember, you're about to do something that's never been done before. So you got to think ways that you've never thought before. Do you know the biggest discouragement and disappointment to people that want to do something mega for God that can't do it? What the biggest disappointment is? What's the biggest disappointment? Shout it out. Y'all scared? Not around the right people? Is it the wrong people? You know, the biggest disappointment with somebody that feels something very powerful on the inside of them is they can't get it out. I, I got it in me, but I can't get it out of me. Yeah, I got this business in me, but I can't get it out of me. I got this ministry that I see, but I can't get it out of me. Why is that? Your mindset. You're still rocking with the same crew. So before God begins to move, before God begins to move in my life in some of these things that I'm walking, I'm going to tell you something I'm not walking in now. Before God began to do this, my conversations changed. My thought patterns began to change. Some of y'all are enslaved by your friends. I'm just going to tell you that. Just, 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 it is what it is. I remember when. Girl, you can't do that. Man, I don't know about that, man. You better hold on to that job. They can't see what you see. Well, I wish I had the strength to preach this all like I wanted to. Your mindset has got to change. So one of the things the Lord said to me, he said, change who you're talking to. So I start talking to different people. I start talking to tomorrow. I start talking to different guys. And although I'm doing good, doing excellent, I think, but I start talking to people who know how to stimulate the mind. I don't talk to lazy people. You have no time for me. I have no time for you. Uh, Brother Marcus, I want to talk to you. I, I, I'm not going to talk to you. Because you're lazy. You don't do nothing. You broke. You ain't going nowhere. You always need to borrow fat dollars. And 
I'm trying to get away from that. I don't want that. I'm in a blessed place, and I'm going to stay here, and I'm going to go break more records for the things of God. So isn't it amazing that God tells me in 2021, Marcus, I'm going to release a record breaker's anointing on your life, and then I die. Then I go through the worst season of my life. In a coma sedation for three months. Had to learn how to walk again. Trach in my throat. IVs all in my body. But God, you said to me that this is my record-breaking movement. This doesn't seem like this is record-breaking. And I was complaining. And God said, be quiet. He said, open your mouth and praise me. With a trach in my throat, he said, and if you heard anybody with a trach, it sounds like a bunch of air. He said, open your mouth and praise me. And it's interesting that the songs that I began to sing unto God was not this new stuff. We got 40 praise singers, 32 dancers, a fog machine in, this, in a disco light, and no power. We got screens with every part of a song onto it. Matter of fact, the whole back wall is a screen now. No power. See, I grew up with my mom was saying power, and the response of the people would be power, Lord. And they sang it for 45 minutes until the power fell down. Now, if you sing, you got seven minutes and 41 seconds to get this song out of the way. And we wonder why there's no power. I grew up on songs like, you know, the very first song that I sang when I got up off my deathbed? Have you tried Jesus? If I wasn't preaching, I would have cut the whole front of the church up. Because I tried him and I found out he's all right. I found him to be the healer, for real. I found him to be the dead raiser, for real. He all right with me. And so I'm, I'm like, wait a minute. I ain't breaking no records. Dear Lord, I slept from February to April. You know, the Lord said, open your mouth and praise me. So I'm praising God. And then he said to me, now let me share something with you. All the men in your bloodline died early. Every last one. Out of about 13, I think it's four left. Of my uncles and aunts. Four out of 14. He said, you broke a bloodline record. Don't tell me you didn't break no record. You died like the rest of them. But I brought you back. You broke the bloodline record. No man in your family will die before it's dead. Because you broke. Don't tell me what you didn't break. Because of you. Your nephew, your son, he's going to live long. You are a record breaker. It may not be how you thought it was going to be, but you are the record. I said, oh, God. He said, you broke that. I didn't cause this to happen, but I'm going to use it for my glory. All the men in your family are going to live long because of this. You're not just a record breaker. You're a bloodline breaker. And then he said this to me in September. I said, man, yeah, you're right. He said, yeah. He said, watch this. 
He said, what month is it? I said, September. He said, count out the rest of the months in this year. I said, October. By the time I got to November, I started praising God. He said, I'm going to cause you to break records. Not just this year, but on beyond. He said, but this year ain't over yet. I said, I said, what? He said, ooh, give me the strength, Lord Jesus. He said, I've been working on some things behind your back you don't know nothing about. Tell somebody God's been working on some stuff behind your back. You don't know nothing about this. God's been doing some things, putting some stuff together that you don't even know about. You, are, you, you don't have no clue what God's been doing behind your back. You don't know the stuff that God's been connecting in your favor. You don't know the people that God's about to release into your life that he's been working on for all. So I do pretty well on the road. I travel, preach. I do pretty well financially. This pastor says to me, preach in this church, very well blessed man. He said this to me, year's not over yet. I want you to come minister 45 minutes prophetically. I said, okay. I ministered for 40 minutes. He wrote me a check for $7,000. So let's say record breaking. Then I brought somebody with me, my sister, who's also a prophet. He wrote her a check for 3000 for just talking for five minutes. He said, record breaking. He said, son, I've been working on stuff for you. Listen, you just keep your life clean and holy. There's more to come. There's some things you don't know about that I got my hand in right now. I'm stirring some stuff up for you. Calls me back. He said, look here. Next year. I'm putting you on staff in my church full time. I said, oh, Lord, I can't, move to, I can't move to that city. He said, all you need to do is sit in your front room and pray for me, and I'm going to pay you full time. The Lord said, record breaking. <laughs> Tell somebody something's about to happen that's never happened. What I've been doing in secret, God's about to blow on it. He's about to pray. I've been doing this for 20 years. It's time for somebody to recognize what's in you and pay you. Can I get just one person in faith to open up your mouth and shout record breaker? One more time, record breaker! He said to me, man, what I'm going to pay you next year, you ain't going to have to leave your house. You can travel, do whatever you want to do, but I'll tell you what I'm going to give you. On my staff, you ain't going to have to leave your front room. Breaker, breaker. <laughs> Looking at these new doors open, I'm saying, who are these people? I said, who are these people? These doors that are opening up. You know, my, you know my, my, my chief of staff, he's watching right now. You know what he said? Record breaker. He said, there's stuff coming in that I have never seen before in the 10 years I've been working with you. Wow. They're no longer saying, hey, we're going to give Brother Marcus 2500 whatever. They're saying this to him, whatever. They said, well, this, you, know, he just, you know, just whatever. Just make sure he's not standing. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. See, you've been doing some stuff. Marlon, for years, for a long time, and it's just been like, I'm doing it, I'm still, and you did it because you love God. But I heard the Lord said, now the record breaker's anointing is coming on your life. You're, yeah, you're about to be recognized. Not that you want to be, but God said, because I'm going to do it for you. People finna start being exposed to what you've been doing forever. 
This guy said, where you been? I said, I've been doing the same thing for 20 years. I'm like the Lord, I've changed not. See, there is a set time in this church. I said, there's a set time in this church. Now, I'm, I'm, I usually go to three times of churches. Number one, a church that God wants to resurrect and save. It's dying. He gives me the Ezekiel to come in and breathe life. That's what we as revivalists do. We come to breathe life. Second kind of church I go to is a church that's in serious transition. There's a lot of transition that's gone on to the church. And they, they, they request a, a prophet of the Lord's church. The third kind of church I go to is the church I'm in today. A church that God wants me to make an announcement to. I like the third kind. My job is real easy. It goes something like this. Listen, you've been doing this for 16 years. You've been doing extremely great. God is pleased. God is well. And God is coming to say that I'm promoting everybody. I like those kind of churches. Where everybody gets the promotion from God. That when God comes to visit, he just don't stop by the pastor and the deacon. He It won't just be three record breakers in here, but a church full of record. Yes. Yes. This church's stripes are changing. You know what's been happening to me at the end of this year? I'm almost done because I'll take all day. You know what's happening to me at the end of this year? Record breaking stuff. I said, Lord, what's going to happen next year? I'm, I'm consecrating. I'm responsible to John Eckhart, I'm responsible to some apostles to release the word of the Lord to them. What's going to happen next year? Record breakers. You ain't wrote your best book yet. You ain't preached your best message yet. You ain't made enough money yet in your business. I come to talk to some entrepreneurs. I prophesied this into a lady in Dallas. She, she said, I need to write you so many changes. Don't write me nothing. Just write it to your local church. Write it to your past. She said, ever since she released that word in my life, I didn't release it to the whole church. I released it to her. That word record breaker. She said, I'm doing record breaking business. I've never done business in the hundreds of thousands like this before. I feel like I owe you. You don't owe me nothing. Write it to your local church. Unless God tells you, write it to your local church. It's a million dollar church. Multi million dollar church. I said, but write it to your church. And keep moving in what God is doing in your life. And I, said, I told her, I said, after you break those records, not too many days hence, you're going to break the same, you're going to break the record over again. It's an anointing coming on you. It's a force of the Holy Ghost getting on you. I don't care how many albums you recorded or how many singles you recorded, you ain't recorded your best one. I don't care how many prophetic words you released, God is about to give you a record-breaking prophetic word. Let me tell you, let me, you know, we've, seen, we've said this so many times. You ain't seen nothing yet. So, a few things I want to say real quick. Number one, you have to, you've never been here before. So another thing you're going to have to do is develop a chamber of prayer. Because the Spirit of God is going to lead you places and do, the, to do things you've never done before. You're going to make... 
regular hustler than that. You're going to make connections you've never made before. You're going to shake hands with some people that have the ability to say yes and write a check and say do it. This isn't wishful thinking. This is happening to me right now. As I'm speaking to you, I'm telling you what's happening to my life right now. Now watch this. You have to develop a prayer chamber. Now I found it interesting. People who listen to my testimony and they praise God. They run around the room. We shout. We thank God. I've got more people saved off this cut in my throat. People say, what happened? You got, you got stabbed. I tell them, no, I was on the ventilator. Three times I was on the ventilator. Three times. And I died the third time. And I knew I was going to die. I told the doctor, I said, you, even though I was in, the, in and out of sedation, my mother's on the phone with me. And I would just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. She'd be like, yes, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when the doctor walked in and said, we're putting you back on the ventilator, I began to scream. I'm going to die. And I did. We would have gotten saved from this cut in my throat. Now, people get pra praise God. What's your name again? What's your name? Kim. They praise God. Kim, they shout, they dance. But that wasn't the most powerful part about the testimony. I found the most powerful part about this testimony, Marlon, was one day the doctor called my mother. She's sitting right here. And said, uh, Marcus is speaking in a language that the nurses and doctors can't understand. Now, they tell you that I knew what was going on. I, don't know, I didn't know anything that was going on around me. I did not. I had no clue what was happening around. When they came in the room, I had no clue what was going on. And he said, does this have anything to do with his religion? She said, yeah, that's his prayer language. He said, well, then he's a very praying man. The Bible says the spirit helpeth. Our infirmities with groanings. Even when you're in a coma, Ibra, O Eteleba, Sanamayo, Brate, Yande, Kunda, Lebro, Osanamaka. I can imagine the Holy Ghost is praying through me. Oh, you coming up out this thing. Death, you better back. The Holy Ghost was praying through me when I didn't understand what was going on. How about them apples? The Holy Ghost is praying through me. He is speaking in an unknown tongue, speaking not in men. How be it he speak mysteries? We know that word mysteries mean divine secrets. Locked up on the inside of me, coming out. What was that? That was the Holy Ghost praying, talking when I couldn't talk for myself. Oh, he's he going to live and not die. The spirit was praying through me. When the doctor would come in and, 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 and call my mother and say, this ain't looking good. The spirit of God was praying on the inside of me. Oh, yes. He coming through this thing. He coming out. He's going to be restored back 100%. So you got to develop this prayer chamber. And the third thing and the final thing is you got to understand this, that the record breakers that God is raising up are going to be carriers of the authentic glory of God. I didn't say the anointing of God. I said the glory of God. You know, God will anoint people for people. But to carry the glory is something different. That's a lifestyle. So this, this, there's a term. Let me give you the term. And I promise you I'm just going to minister for you and I'm going to be done. There's a term in the Greek. I hope I can say this properly. Episiasco. I got it. Episiasco. You know what that is? It means, watch this, the overshadowing. Of the presence of God. Watch this. It's the overshadowing 
of the presence of God, which always brings the boule, which is another Hebrew term. And this means his immutable will for physical circumstances. Moses had an fiasco. When he came out the glory, everybody knew because there was a physical manifestation. And not that he'd been in the, but he'd been in the glory. When Jesus had an fiasco, there was a physical manifestation. Mary had an fiasco. Because when she came out of the glory, she had a baby. There was a physical manifestation that she had been in the glory of God. There will be a physical manifestation that this church has been in the glory. How is it? You come to church and they're bringing people in here on stretchers. Checking them out the hospital. This is their last stop before the cemetery. They're going to have an fiasco. The glory is going to overshadow this house. If I got anybody with some faith in here, I'm not wishfully talking. I'm talking out of the spirit of the living God. It's about time for the river to flush flowing into this city. who have lost their mind sitting in the glory having an fiasco an overshadowing of the glory of God and a physical manifestation is left that they've been with God what's the physical manifestation they're clothed and in their right mind do you know how we're going to see this next wave of God's glory, you know where we're going to see it at? In you. You're going to be the voice. God's not raising up no more new preachers like that because they have failed us all. It's going to be in you. That river is going to flow out of you. And you're going to bring people to the river corporately. In five years, this church is going to build robustly because of what God begins to do in this church. You know, uh, about a year ago, I was on my couch praying in the spirit. You can play something. And um, Marlon Reed came up. And I think I texted him. I wish I could have went back and pulled the text. I remember it. The Lord brought it to my memory as I was standing here. And it went something like this. The glory of God is getting ready to hit your church. It was a year ago. I'm not talking about just a revival or a move of God. I'm talking about sustained moves of God. Well, we see Isaiah 6 and 1 manifested. It talks about in the glory fill the temple. It's about his train. You know what it means there? How many women here have gotten married? Raise your hand. How many want to get married? Raise your hand. It's not a trick question. Just raise your hand. I go to these conferences and preach and say, how many single people want to get married? You lying. <laughs> You lying. You tired of taking out your garbage. 
You tired of going home and holding up with a pillow? Come on, let's be honest. You tired of watching Netflix by yourself? You want to be married. I said, you want to be married. But a bride wears a wedding garment. And she has attached to her wedding garment what they call a train. And it's the ideology that the bride, the train keeps coming. It keeps coming. And it keeps coming. And it keeps. That's what the writer was trying to get you to see. And God keeps coming. And he keeps coming. And he keeps coming. And just when you thought you had enough, he keeps coming. This church is moving into a record. Just, just, just play. This church is moving into a record-breaking movement. This is not a preaching, a preached message. You guys get the word here. I was thinking, I'm like, Lord, I said, you know what? I feel like there's so much word in this church. It's, it's a word church. Hey, I was listening out when Martin was teaching. He was at the table about this series. I'm like, man, I need to come to church. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, now I know the word, but where that's at? So if he could talk to me on a table for 15 minutes and have me go back to the room, like, where that's at again? I know you're getting the word here. 15 minutes, I'm like, oh, they're getting the word. So this church is getting ready to experience, hear me, the move of the record breakers. It's not to be bragged, to be arrogant. I heard you, Lord. I heard you loud and clear, sir. There's going to be a showdown of what is genuine and what is not real. All this prophetic witchcraft and manipulation people prophesying people out of their good churches I ain't never seen so much mess in my life I warned this pastor I warned him I said keep that man out your church he said, oh, no, no. I said do you believe the Lord uses me he said you're the most accurate prophet that I know personally I said you keep that man out your church the day that preacher was supposed to come to this church, 12 inches of snow flew on Chicago. I called him, I said, this is the word of the Lord. <laughs> Keep that preacher out of your church. He has what I call the spirit of seduction. His words are well, but his life is not. His intentions are evil. He's not a prophet, he's a warlock. And he's coming to seduce your people. He didn't listen. He had the service anyway. Three months later, a third of his church got up and walked out. Half of his leadership got up and walked out. And followed this warlock. And these are people who had amazing marriages. Great leadership in the street. And to this point, many of them are divorced. True story. Because they were moved by a seducing spirit and not the authenticity of God. Well, I got good news. In spending time with the Lord Jesus when I died, he said to me, I'm coming to measure that spirit. I'm coming to judge it. And I'm coming to take it down. You know, Jesus is the head of the church. He's the CEO of the church. He said, Marcus, I'm I said, Lord, ask him a few questions. And he said to me, pride won't let them repent. 
He said, I told you to pray for these. It's, it's, it's just several leaders. He said, I want you to pray for them for three years. I've just been praying for three years. Crying out to God. Literally crying and weeping out to God. And the day the Lord said to me, I have made a decision. I'm taking it down. So what's happening is churches like this that are solid, that are whole, that are walking in the love of God, the power of God, deliverance, are going to suddenly find themselves having to build large facilities. Because when God takes down these spirits, there's going to be a fast scattering. People are going to find themselves in conversations and say, well, let's go check out Marlon Reed. He's always been the same. We tried this new stuff. It don't work. Let's go back. So you'll find yourself like holding five or six services completely jammed back. Like we got to build. We got a bill. Don't say, oh, no, say, yes, Lord. Because one thing about God, when people come, he's going to already have provision set. So you can just start saying, tear this down, buy this, buy that, tell the hotel you got to go, buy this, buy this, buy this. That's why God is putting a record breaker's anointing in here. Why? Because the time is up. It's going to be just up. Stand on your feet. Lift your hands and pray in the spirit. Come on, let's just suck it. Stop breaking back and I'll see you Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, take a few minutes. Come on, Come on you got a prayer language. Pray. Come on, open your mouth in the Holy Ghost for it. Let that anointing be stirred up in you. The anointing of the record breaker. The anointing of the bloodline breaker. Yeah. Oh. Mashallah, daga de bo hukata manasa kadia. Baki de de ina ando oke di bahadia sana mahadia. Kabada kia la hadia asia tini. Come on, open your mouth out of your belly. It's flowing a new river. Out of your belly, it's flowing the record breaking river. Yeah, Bashida Pakanede, Mangalena Pokia, Teva di Kunana Nahidia, Rebi Likumbra de Kandilistubra Kataya. Yeah. Of the record breaker. Stir up the anointing of the record breaker. Stir up the anointing of the record breaker. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Stir it up, stir it up. Oh, stir it up. Come on, Asti Kadaba Horakebe Hata Nasuna Maya. Come on, come on, come on. It's coming out your belly. Ashikeba. Amanusaka. Amanusakati. Amanosaka for him. Regadeva Tika na Handa le Bosuda Bakin. Come on, stir it up. That's right, come on. 
Here it comes. There it is. You ain't seen nothing yet. God said, for such a time as this, I have prepared you as a weapon, a sharp weapon. Yeah, I shoot the kabiasa kitty. Stir that record breaker, Sidoni. I'm making of you a sharp weapon. I'm making of you a sharp weapon. Hey! Intercession is coming on your life like never before. Yeah, 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 yeah. You come and do to tie. Sambra kunda la sarabaya. In the last sumbra ever appear at the top. of your life. Yeah, a new anointing to break records. Bloodline records. Limit breaker. I call you forth. I call you forth. The Lord said, I've heard you cry. I have heard your cry, said the Lord of hosts. And I come to do business with you, saith God. A new covenant is coming out of your bloodline because of your voice. A new covenant is coming out of your bloodline. A new movement is coming out of your bloodline. God is touching your physical body. You are a weapon in the hand of God. The devil is in trouble. I said the devil is in trouble. You were born for this time. You were born for this time. Before the end of this year, one request there are three things before the lord all three of them are going to be answered before the end of this year before the end of this year you're going to be walking in full manifestation somebody with some faith help her praise god up in here <laughs> There's a shift happening. The water levels are rising in this church. I'm raising up new water levels, says the Lord.
record breakers anointing Oh, I pour on you Something fresh and new I pour out on you Some new things I'm calling you to do I pour on you My glory My glory My glory This church is going to go through some massive buildings. I released the Kataya, the anointing of Nehemiah over this man, that he would rebuild this city. That he would rebuild, I heard you, Lord, not just spiritually, but God's going to cause you to rebuild naturally some things in this city. God's glory is the answer for the economical situation going on. God is going to, listen to me. People think that I, I don't prophesy like this often. It's not like this. The glory of God is coming to this church like it has never seen before, like a wave, a tsunami. God said, I found you faithful in doing what I called you to do. And so there's going to be a rebuilding of the spiritual climate in this city. You're going to plant four new campuses. Listen, I, I don't have time for the low-level prophecy. Name calling, I can do all that. I, that's, that's pointless to me. You know your name. I know your name. We all know your name. You know what God does that? I, I, I've been in places where God done that. And I'm like, Lord, why are you doing that? Pastor. Because all what happens is you start calling people's name. People like, oh! You know what they're doing? They're setting you up with a big stick up. They operated those gifts and they raised 90 offerings. Well, you knew your name before you went to church. Why you got to give because you knew your name? You know why God does that? Because the person that he's about to prophesy to is immature. And he has to get their attention. Oh, you don't like that, do you? I don't get enough of YouTube and prophets. You know what kind of spirit you YouTube in? Facebook Live, everybody can be a prophet now. But you're going to build four campuses. God's telling me he's going to send you some young pastors over the next two years that are equipped and trained that are going to come in this church. And they're going to submit their ministries. It didn't work. And in some of them, it didn't work for them. And they got discouraged. But they're called to do what they're called to do, what God anointed them to do. They just didn't have the right coach. They didn't have the right father. And they failed, and the enemy beat them over the head. Told them, well, you're no good. You weren't called. Well, they were called. They're going to run into a guy like you who's going to father them and send them back out. And it's gonna be different. That's gonna happen a lot here. There's gonna be a lot of, lot of pastors and leaders that really are genuinely called, but they've been hurt. They've been manipulated, prophesied out of something into something they weren't called to do. 
You know how many prophets I listen to? None. I go back and watch some of my brother Hagen's old tape. Is it? Is it? What about so and so? I don't care. I don't want to hear. Four campuses. The assignment of the Lord is going to increase. Oh, I, I just wish this church could really see what's about to happen. Now, what I want you to do is what, aside from, he'll, he'll give me another room. He'll take care of me. He know how to travel. So listen, I'm going to say this. He's saying vision. He's speaking vision. Are you with me still? Now, so help me God. I did this in a church and raised $200,000. I got in the back and the pastor said, how much of that you want? I said, how much of it did I say before the people that I wanted? Well, you think I'm going to come back here and lie? I said, I fear more God. I fear more. I fear God more than I fear $100,000. Especially if you died and he brought you back. You, you don't want to do nothing to upset him. You won't stay on his good side. So what I want you to do, I know you guys do tithe and offering, but I want you to be something different. I want you to plant a record-breaking seed into this church. Now, if he put us on a building fund, whatever he does, there's a, there's a sign from your tithe. Don't look at me like I fell out of the well. Let me say it again. Don't look at me like I fell out of a well. If you're a business owner, I want you to sow the absolute best seed that your business can sow in look at me crazy I know God I, I don't do this often but I want you to sow a record breaking seed I'm not taking a dime so help me God did you hear me pastor did you hear me I'm a man of integrity this belongs to this local church but I'm going to receive it as a prophet of the Lord's church with clean hands and a pure heart. Why? Because as, I, as you re release that, I'm going to pray and I believe God. I'm not going to touch everybody, but I believe God that you move into a record-breaking season like God is doing for me. That you step in one place and do what you've been doing for 20 years and somebody turn around and write you a $7,000 check for less time. Are you ready for this? I don't want no buckets. Is this, is this an altar up here? I want everybody coming. Everybody coming. I want you to physically come if you can. If you sold by cash app, don't look at me like I'm crazy. If you sold by cash app and sale, I still want you to come to this altar. I want you to release that right now. Everybody in this church is getting your best seed, your record-breaking seed for what's about to happen. I'm going to have to come back. Please bring me back, Pastor. Clean up my doctrine and bring me back, please. If you look to the screen, you'll see three ways of giving. First, by text to give. You all know that, most of you that come here. Secondarily, cash out on the screen if you choose to give that way. And lastly, the old-fashioned way. There's an envelope in front of you. It should be one in your seat. If not, you can wave your hand. Someone will bring an envelope to you. That's for cash offerings. And offer is done by a check. Write that check out to NWG, which is New Wine Glory, the river that's us. Amen. And follow directions from the man of God. Will you do that? Everybody's doing that right now. If you're giving traditionally, I don't know if they still do that. We don't do that either. But somebody may say, I want to just come down and release it on the altar. Do that. But I want everybody doing something significant. Everybody. I'll say this and I'm seated. I'm done. I'm done, JR. Let me say this. This is your. Say this is. I don't like that. This is my, my record breaking movement. Not just a year, 
but record breaking every single year. I'm prophesying this to authors, singers, they're writing books. Like they've, I told John that card, I said, John, he goes, well, I said, you haven't read, Prayers Around Demon was a great book. We were in Amsterdam preaching, and we're walking past the red light district to see what it looked like down there. And his book, Prayers of Right De Route Demons, was right there in the bookstore. I said, you haven't written your best book yet. It's time to break some records. You haven't done your best business deal. This is an anointing. It's time to be the record breaker God has anointed you to be. Well, clap your hands and let's give God a mighty shout of praise. Hallelujah. Now, did you want them to come down to the altar? Yeah, come on. If you're going to come down to the altar, if you're going to bring your offering, bring it to the altar. Just pass it by. Just come and pass by. Let's follow directions out this way and from that way. Walk out and just come by to the altar. Just come. You're going to come to the altar. Amen. You can put the bucket down on the table on the altar. He said, the man of God said, come and put it in the bucket or put it on the altar. Is anybody listening? Amen. So come from where you are. Walk if you want to bring your offering. He said, if you gave by cash app or if you gave electronically, come still. Come to the altar and stand here. He said, there's a release in the house, a record breaking. There's something about the prophetic anointing that when we speak the word of the Lord and you obey it, there's a release in it. It's a simple obedience. That's all. It shows a receptivity that you expect it. I want you to understand something. You have to believe what the man of God has said. So many times people hear things, and I'll be the first one to tell you, when you've been disappointed so much, and you've been let down so much, and all you've seen is failures and people not following through, it tends to make you think, well, you know, I hear what the man of God is saying, but you don't know the old song, you don't know the trouble I've seen. You don't know what's going on. How many have ever just seemed like you were on a... A season of just drawbacks and it's just one thing after a tire blowing out, car going bad, just this happening. It's like, Lord, what in the world is going on? You can hit those seasons in your life. What do you do? You praise your way through, you give God praise, you glorify him, even though it's not happening the way you want it, you still be consistent with God and still obey the Lord and you don't falter. But see, when a man of God gets up and prophesies, let me tell you something. Why I brought him here? Anybody know why I'm bringing these men of God here? It's the close of the year. We're going into a new year. And it's time for, I want, I want true men, authentic men of God to come and speak in the house. I didn't tell him what to say. God knows I don't want to start four campuses. God knows that I don't want to be bothered. I didn't talk to him and say, come in and tell the people something. I didn't, I didn't know what he was going to say. Because if I knew if he had said four campuses, I said, don't say that. Don't speak that. I'm a single pastor. I don't feel like being bothered with all that. <laughs> he said, you know the feeling. You know, um. There was a point about a year ago I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, I feel like I've preached out all the revelation I have. I preached out everything out of my heart. I preached all these these I think they're phenomenal revelations because you know they were phenomenal when I was getting. I was like, Jesus, what? Preached those things out, those epinosis series, those DNA series, those quantum Christ series, those revelations God gave me. Those things came out of deep depression. Those things came from sorrowing that was a point in my life that i was thinking about dying and committing suicide not committing suicide but dying i, I didn't want to commit it because i'm i'm not gonna commit suicide but i thought about life being over i just ready to go and i began to pray and ask the lord right in the midst of this church and pastoring lord just take me out just quietly i'll go i don't really want to die tragically but you know maybe if that happened it'd be just just gone i'd rather be with you if i'm living my life and doing everything i can to come to be see you in, in the end then let's just cut through the stuff and just go there now let's just do it and then the first thing, what about the people? I said, they don't care. They'll get somebody else. Somebody else come along and preach to them. It doesn't really matter. You're just a person. You're just a human. You'll be gone. Somebody will come in and it'll be you always. I was, I was having these discussions with the Lord. I was like, I'm tired. I'm, I'm really tired. I've traveled. I've seen all the preaching around the country, around the world. I've pastored for, I pastored for several years at that point. And I said, Lord, I'm ready. You know. And I was saying it until somebody called me on the phone. A little intercessor called me and told me, you know, I had a dream that you were praying and asked the Lord to take you home. And you were sitting in a restaurant and, and you were telling somebody else, you'd rather go be with the Lord like Paul. And a light shined from heaven on your face. And the Lord said, if you say it, and you want it I'm going to take you. I'll do it. And I said, hmm. 
I know that was God. There's no way she could have knew it. It came out of Florida, a phone call. They don't, somebody I don't ever even talk to hardly. And I said, well, now when it comes serious like that, you're going to think, do you really want to go? <laughs> I thought about it. I said, and, 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 and she said, the dream said, she said, the Lord says, if you ask him, if you keep asking him, he's going to grant your wish because he wants to give you the desire of your heart. I stopped and said, wow, I had to start thinking, do I really want to go? And I said, well, the Lord, I feel like I'm, I almost feel like at my age, I'm almost, I feel like I'm done. I did what you told me to do. And, you know, sometimes you don't realize that you let looking at people and things and circumstances. It's not easy pastoring single. Don't let anybody believe you that. I have all kind of marvelous opportunities to backslide and fall in sin and fall into all kinds. And I got people lying regularly. Talking about, oh, they, they say I'm doing everything but running a sex ring in here. I'm telling you. They'll prophesy. He got sex trapped. They'll be prophesying. It's lying. All, I mean, I, you, you, gotta be, you would be shocked at the things I hear. People say, well, Pastor, why are you so tough? Because you don't know how many hits I've taken. Now I open up letters and people are telling me all kind of crazy stuff, rebuking me and binding me. I don't even know who they are. Just, just wow, thanks. Thanks a lot. Saying all kind of stuff. You, you get tired of that, you know, and you develop a tough skin, but you actually get tired of it. I mean, nothing anybody says really bothers me anymore. I mean, really, I can hear, I can hear the worst stuff and just like, wow, what's, up, what's on Netflix tonight? It doesn't really matter because this is just par for the course. You hear it. When you start doing the work of God, you're going to make a lot of people upset. There's just no way about it. You can't please God and please everybody. You can't do it. But what we made our mind of was to contend for the faith that was once delivered of the saints. It's not easy. You know, we could compromise. You know, we could pay the money and bring in some great, all the greatest bands in the world and, and have an hour service and let you out in 15 minutes and tell you that you're going to be all right and just tell you what you want to hear. But I can't do that. I can't be that kind of pastor. I didn't want to pass. People say, you know, pastor. I didn't want to pastor single. I didn't. And after I got started preaching and started pastoring, it got harder to get married. You get all these crazy folks coming in. We had to put somebody out of church last week talking about they're my fiance. I'm like, you, I don't, not your fiance. I don't even know you. They went down to the police department and told him that he's a pastor. He's trying to kill women down there, literally. Livonia police called me. You all can cut the feed now. Livonia police called me and said, <laughs> Lavonia police called me and was like, uh, yeah, woman, you had an incident. And I said, yeah, we did have an incident. Uh, you know, 